Coach Barrick here from Equity Fitness, where we help people be healthy, fit, and have fun doing it. I want to talk about common movement themes, and that seems kind of weird, but as a coach, when we're coaching people, we're doing a lot of different things, squatting and deadlifting and gymnastics and all of these things. And all of these movements that we do have common movement themes. They have things that they all, that they generally have in common. And these are the things that we're looking for when we're coaching. So, hey, these are the things that are really important in any movement, and we want to make sure that you're doing them. So the first one is midline stabilization. We want to make sure that your midline is stable. If we are picking up something heavy and your midline is not stable, we start seeing changes in your spine, we're going to have a bad time. Something's going to happen. <clears throat> Having a slightly rounded back is not awful. It's when that back position changes under load, right? It's when you're, you're loaded, you have something overhead, and then you get overextended when you press up uh, those dumbbells overhead. When we get overextended, that spine moves a little too much under load, then we have an issue. So we wanna make sure that we are having that midline stability. Another one, we're doing kipping pull-ups or going for a bar muscle-up and we overextend in our arch position, right? That's how we tweak a back because we didn't have midline stability and we went too far. We overextended our spine and something weird happened. So we wanna make sure no matter if it's gymnastics, even if we do have change of spine, we wanna make sure we're not overdoing it. We want that stable midline. The next one is core to extremity. We wanna use the big muscles first then the little muscles. If we're rowing, we wanna drive with the legs, we wanna open with the hips, and then we wanna pull with the arms. We don't wanna pull with the arms until our legs have done all the work or as much as work as they have. If we're pitching, right, it starts from the legs. We step with the leg, we throw the hips, then the shoulder, then the elbow, then the wrist, then the finger, right? Big muscles, little muscles big joints, little joints. We like core to extremity because that is how we move large things. That is how we are efficient with our movement. Picking up something heavy with just your arms or just your back is gonna end poorly. It's not effective or efficient. Core to extremity are both of those things. When we're pulling a little too early on our clean or on our, on our row, it's not efficient and it's not effective and it can end poorly. So big muscles, then the little muscles. So we're gonna see that a lot. Then we, the next one, number three, is balance about the frontal plane. What in the world does that mean? What that means is generally speaking, we want the implement as close to us as possible. If I'm deadlifting, and I go around my knees, right? So this is a straight line. When I'm deadlifting, I'll come here and I go around my knee and then up. That bar's getting really far away from us. When I'm overhead, it's out in front of me. I'm going around my face and then I'm just holding it out in front of me. Think about how long you can hold something out in front of you, like a weight. It's not gonna be a long time. Now put that thing directly overhead over your center of mass. You can hold it much longer. That's because it's balanced on the frontal plane, right? Your frontal plane is your posterior versus your anterior, right? The back side of you and the front of you. So if we are balanced along that, it's over your center of mass or is as close to our center of mass as we can get. So we don't want it too far back. We don't want it too far forward. We want it as close to our center of mass as possible. Number four is posterior chain engagement. We wanna learn how to use our big muscles, right? Our hamstrings, our glutes, our butt, our lower back. Those all are posterior and our back. We wanna use the backside. They're strong. Most people are quad dominant. We wanna make sure that we're utilizing that backside. A lot of times in deadlifts, we have a tendency for people to be very squatty because they're very quad dominant. We wanna make sure that we're building up that backside. If we don't have strong hamstrings and glutes, we tend to see knee problems, right? If we do a lot of running, we do a lot of biking, when you're not getting a lot of posterior chain recruitment, you're gonna have 
some knee issues. We need to be balanced between those two muscle groups in order to be strong and healthy. And then to lift heavy stuff, to do heavy stuff with your legs, the posterior chain is going to be the main mover. Number five is sound hip function. We want to make sure that our hips are opening properly. We don't want that. Um, we don't want to be getting under a clean too early without using our hip, right? This is very similar to the, the core to extremity. We want to make sure that we're using our hips properly. We want to make sure that we're squeezing our butt at the top. I see a lot of people that are doing deadlifts that don't fully stand up and are not squeezing that butt at the top and using those hips. We want to make sure that the, that hip function is opening properly. We see this a lot in kettlebell swings as well when we're swinging with the arms and the hips aren't doing the work. We need to make sure that those hips are hinging, they're opening and closing to do the work. You can see that in gymnastics as well. We wanna, in a kipping pull-up, wanna make sure that we hit that hollow arch and then those feet come up and then we pop that hip open. If those feet fly down and don't, and that hip doesn't come up, we're not using our hip and we're not being effective or um, efficient. So sound hip function and all of those. So we're going to be looking for that in the cleans and the pull-ups and the deadlifts. This is probably the next one, active shoulders. This is probably what I cue the most lately. Uh, and maybe it's just like some of our, our old people that, you know, we just focus so much on core to extremity and focus so much on posterior chain en engagement that we forget about the upper the active shoulders. And shoulders is just this whole uh, shoulder girdle, right? The front, the back, you know, the, the, the neck to the bottom of your sternum. If they're not active, bad things can happen. So if I'm deadlifting and my shoulders aren't active, it needs to get tight somehow. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna round my back eventually and then my shoulders will get tight and then my back's rounded I'm lifting heavy load and something bad happens. So when we're deadlifting, we need to make sure that our shoulders are active, right? They're back and down. So you can think about up, back, down. That's an active shoulder. Like you can think about squeezing your chest. That's another cue I like to use. We wanna see your lats move when we set up for a deadlift. When we're in a kipping pull up and we're hanging, we wanna see an active shoulder. And that'll keep that shoulder safe. Um, number seven, full range of motion. Joints are meant to be used in full range of motion. And full range of motion is how we hit multiple muscle groups at one time. When we squat, we hit the quads and the hamstrings and the calf and the shin. We can hit all those muscles, all those muscle groups, right? Muscles are not built to be used in isolation. Yes, doing some bodybuilding um, for some uh, physical therapy, occupational therapy, like those type of issues can be very helpful and fun. But in general, we want to use full range of motion so we can use multiple muscle groups at the same time, right? Joints need multiple muscle groups and we want the full range of motion to do things in life, right? To be able to go sit on the floor to be able to put things overhead. We want the capacity to do those things. We need to make sure that we're using the full range of motion so we hit all those muscle groups so we can stay active and do all of those things that we want to do. And then finally, we have stance and grip. You know, depending on the movement, we the stance and grip matter. If I'm going to deadlift and I have this wide stance, that's going to be an issue. If I am doing a clean and I have a wide stance, that's going to be an issue. If my hands are too wide and I'm trying to clean, that's going to be super awkward. So we need to make sure that we have the proper stance and grip for the movement in question. And we see this all the time in deadlifting, right? The deadlift, the, the feet are a little too wide and the hands are a little too narrow. So now the knees are coming in and they're in a bad rounded position. You bring the feet in, bring the feet bring the feet in, bring the hands out a bit, voila, all of a sudden they're moving better. Stance and grip, super important, but it changes depending on what the movement is, just like most of these things, right? Core to extremity for a push press, it's gonna be a little bit different than for a clean, but it's still important. So midline stability, core to extremity, 
balance about the frontal plane, posterior chain engagement, sound hip function, active shoulder, full range of motion, and stance and grip. Cheers.